each and every one of you out there tonight. <coughs> we would like to welcome you to the Word of Power Gospel Hour. Uh, the Lord gave me a message tonight, which kind of it pertains to each and every one of us in the body of Christ. And this message is to the church tonight, it's to the body of Christ. You know, when God saved us and redeemed us, God had a purpose and a plan for each and every one of our individual lives. Some people are called to the ministry. Some are called to the five-fold ministry. Some are called just to the ministry. Some are people are called to, to government and to helps. And we, each and every one of us need to run a race, and we need to know what our calling is. And usually we can know that through prophecy, or else we can know by the impressions God is putting in our heart. We'd like to welcome you to the program tonight, and we like to thank the TV station for having us on the, on the air on this broadcast. And I pray tonight that the Lord would bless them. And I pray tonight, shall we pray before we get into the message? My name is Reverend Ronald Davis, and the name of our program is Word of Power Ministries. And Father, I pray that tonight, Father God, that each and every person that's watching this program, Father God, Father, I pray that you would anoint the, the message, anoint your word. I pray that your word would have free course to go forth, Father God. Father, I pray that you would empower your word with fire and power tonight. Father, I pray that whoever is watching this TV broadcast tonight, that, Father, I pray that you would open up their heart to understand and you will open their ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church in this hour and unto your people, Father God. Father, I thank you tonight, Father God. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you all the praise, Father. Lord, let the engraft the word that is able to save the soul, Father God. Let it open their hearts that they'll receive it this night with all meekness and gentleness, Father God. And Lord, I thank you tonight. Lord, anoint me as a vessel that I'll deliver your message right and your word right, Father God. And Father, we'll give you all the glory and we'll give you all the praise. And Lord, I thank you for touching the hearts of people tonight, Father God. I thank you for restarting them, rekindling the fire within them. And Father, I pray, and even as this message tonight goes forth, that people would be stirred up again in their spirit, Father God. And those that sit down, I pray, Father, that you re them and re them up again to give back and run this race, God, that you've called us to and to finish. And we give you all the glory and the praise, Father God, for all the people you're going to touch this night. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Tonight I have a message, and it's called Running Our Race. If you have a Bible with you, uh, uh I'd like to you go with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to be looking at some scriptures. We're going to be studying some scriptures together tonight. And the name of this message is Running Our Race. As I was praying and seeking the Lord, the Lord gave me this message. And I think it's very time to the church and the body of Christ. The reason that the Holy Spirit chose this message it's because the Lord told me we're all in a, in a, we're in a spiritual race and we're each and every one of us at different points in our walk and in our race for God. But many people have got now the race. They've got now the purpose, the plan, and the will of God. And they're sitting on the sidelines. They're sitting on the pews in the church. And they're not fulfilling their purpose and their plan and their call. Listen, people. Romans 8.28 said, We know that God works all things together for the good of them that love Him and are called according to His purpose. You know, when God saved us, He had a purpose and a plan that was predestined from the foundation of the world. He had a predestined plan. We Each and every one of us, we have a destiny to fulfill for Almighty God. And we need to fast, we need to pray, and we need to seek the Lord in His Word and in prayer and find out God's hidden, revealed will for our lives. We're going to be looking at some scriptures here, okay? But anyway, back to what I was saying. The Lord said, too many people have gotten out of the race. And they're sitting on the pews and they're not doing nothing. Listen, I pray that the Word of God is convicting some of you tonight. I pray that the Word of God is challenging your spirits tonight. Jesus said, my word is spirit, my word is life. I pray the words that I'm speaking tonight would be sown right into your heart, into your spirit. And it would challenge you and encourage you. I want to encourage you out there tonight. If you've sat down and you've quit on God, listen, folks, let me tell you something tonight. When Jesus came to planet Earth, 
He came from heaven. He had a destiny to fulfill. Jesus Christ of Nazareth ran his race and he fulfilled his destiny. He ran his race all the way to the end. My Bible says, it says over in, 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 the, in the scriptures, in the epistles, it says we must endure until the end. We must run our race until the end. That's what the Bible says. It says those who finish their course, it says shall be saved. Amen. If you'll go with me over here. And the Lord said, too many have sat down and they got now the race. Instead of them fulfilling God's purpose, eternal plan for their life, they're sitting on the sidelines, they're sitting in the pews, and they're watching other people running their race. And I challenge you this night to get back into the race. You know, if Jesus hadn't fulfilled his purpose and plan and ran his race to the very end, you know, his race was set before him, and he knew what it was to fulfill that he had to go to the cross and die and defeat Satan and strip him of his power and give him back to his people and to his church, that he could empower his church, that he could take away the authority that Satan had stolen from man when man fell in sin in the Garden of Eden. You know, Jesus didn't have to have power of the devil. He got power and victory over the devil that he could give it back to us. In Genesis, it talks about in chapter 1, that God gave man dominion over the earth and the things, oh, the fishes of the sea and the animals and everything in the earth. Jesus had to come back to defeat Satan after man sinned and turned that power and dominion that God gave man over to Satan. Jesus had to come back, strip Satan of his power and authority to give it back to us. Jesus didn't need to do it for himself. He is the eternal God. I'm going to tell you, Jesus always has had authority over the enemy, the devil. Uh, our Father threw him out of heaven when, when Satan sinned in heaven. And he threw Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden when they sinned. And, and Jesus came to planet Earth. And he ran his course. He ran his race. He knew what he had to do. You know, people, we need to find out the will of God to be empowered, anointed, and know the will of God and do and run our race and do what he's called us to do. Amen? And I challenge you out there tonight. You know, if the church will get this gospel message out, it says, He that endures to the end shall be saved. It says over in Matthew 24, it says that this gospel of the kingdom must go into all the world and nations as a witness. Then the end shall come. Whenever we get off of those pews, Acts 1-8 says that God has gave us power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon us, He empowered us to be witnesses. It says, You shall receive power if the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem, that was right where they lived. Next, he said in Jerusalem, and then he said in Judea, and then Samaria, and then he said the uttermost ends of the earth. You know, we need to witness to our communities. We need to witness and tell people about Jesus. You know, that's what this whole purpose and plan of the church is for. Amen. If you have a Bible and you would turn with me, and I'll give you a second to get your Bible. If you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're going to be looking and start in verse 24. It says this, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. We have to run this race, people. We're in a race. Too many times Christians, they want to run somebody else's race. And can I tell you something tonight, and I, I say this to you in love, too many times we like what somebody else has, the way God's anointed them or gifted them, and we want to get out of our track running our race, and we want to jump our lane, and we want to get in another uh, lane, and we want to run somebody else's race. Listen, God loves each and every individual one of us. You know, every star in this planet is different. God is so creative and he's so sovereign that not one star is the same. Even snowflakes, all the billions and trillions of snowflakes that fall into the earth, not two snowflakes are the same. And I'm going to tell you something. God has a purpose and plan for each and every one of you. And we need to find it out. We don't need to fulfill somebody else's purpose and plan and run their race. God hasn't called us to do that. Too many times that a lot of things happen in the church. We see people prophesying, so we want to get over it, and we try that. And we're not anointed and gifted to do it, and we get in the flesh, and we cause havoc, and we hurt people. Listen, run the race that God has set before you, and I'm going to follow God the best that I can and, and, and fulfill the purpose and the plan that he has for me in my life. 
You know, God loves you just the way you are. He has a plan for you. You're different than other people, but God knows you, and he has a plan for you. And we need to try to follow that purpose and plan. Amen? And, and we need to quit running somebody else's lane and, and jumping our lane and getting out of it and wanting to run somebody else's race because it, it, cause, it causes a lot of problems. Amen? Run the course in the race God has set for you. Amen? Now, if you go with me to verse 25, and it says, And every man is strata for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. You remember, I said, He that endures to the end shall be saved. And that's what the gospel says. It says that two times in Matthew. It says it in Matthew 24, and it also says it another time in the book of Matthew. And Paul went on to say, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as the one that beateth the air. And Paul, in verse 27, he said, But I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. Now let's go back up here to verse 26, and, and let's see what Paul's talking about. Paul said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I. Listen, when you out there running, uh, we're also fighting. Because I'm going to tell you, we all run in a race. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you, the devil's out there running a the race too. And you know what his race that he's running? It's the battle for over your soul, your eternal soul that's within you. Amen? Paul said, I therefore so run, not as an uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Paul knew he had an opponent that was out there to try to going to trip him up and stumble him and stop him from running his race. Amen? And that's what's happened to many Christians. He's tried to do that to me. He's set stumbling blocks in my way. And I'm going to tell you, we have a spiritual opponent. And this is a spiritual warfare that we're in. This word that we have right here, Jesus said, my word is spirit and life. This is spirit. Listen, just as we need food in our natural body that we may grow, we need to eat our heavenly food, our heavenly manna, or bread, if you will. Jesus said he was the bread from heaven that came down from heaven. He said those that ate manna perished, and the manna perished. But he said, I'm the living bread that cometh down from heaven, over in the book of John. He said, whoever eats of my bread and partakes of me, and my bread shall be filled and have everlasting life. Amen. Paul knew. He had a spiritual opponent, and he was going to try to stop him from running his race and his course that God had laid out for him. God has a purpose and plan, and we need to follow that plan as God maps it out, and we run the race. But we have to run the race in time with God. Sometimes we run ahead of him. Sometimes we fall behind. We need to run the race God has set in his timing. You know, I used to race cars when I was younger. I really got into all that kind of stuff. I had a Corvette, and I used to race it. I had a road runner. And you know, during the qualifying times, when you got out there and you held back and, and because you didn't want to give it the full throttle and go down that track with all you had and you cheated, and if you went down that track and ET'd and you got that time, you better not go over that time because they would disqualify you because it was cheating. And, you know, in this race, sometimes when we speed up and we get ahead of God, sometimes we get disqualified. And God has to bring us back to square one. He has to bring us back to the starting line again. Amen? You know, I had a lot of scriptures here, but the Holy Spirit's showing me some things, and I'm speaking as the Spirit is showing me. And I thank the Lord because he's showing me some things here. I'm learning some things tonight. Myself, You know, the, the Bible says over in, in uh, the epistles of John, over toward Revelation, it says the anointing teaches us all things. You know, as the anointing flows sometimes, I learn things myself because it's the Holy Spirit speaking. Amen? And sometimes when we get disqualified in our race, we can also get disqualified if we jump our lane and get in somebody else's lane and try to run their race. God will disqualify us and he'll bring us back to the starting line. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I got tired of starting over. I want to run the race right in the timing God has for my life. I have ran out ahead of God a couple of times, and I had to come back and start over. 
But I thank God. You know, through our experiences, we should learn, people. I thank God that I'm learning. And there is a spiritual opponent out there called Satan, and he has a bunch of fallen angels and, and demons. Uh, uh, and he's going. He always out there going to try to trip you up and cause you to stumble and stop running your race. You know he'll throw every stumbling block in your way he can. When you get up on Sunday mornings, you get ready to go to church. I don't know about you people, but I tell you what, anything go wrong goes wrong on Sunday mornings. I'll get behind the pokiest driver going to church on a Sunday morning, and I'm rushing to get there on time. And I know many of you go through many things. I'll get a shirt out, and all of a sudden i got to iron it real quick. Everything can go wrong when it's time to come to church. The devil, he'll, and when you run into church, he'll put everything out there to try to stop you. Amen? But thanks be to God that always gives us the victory in Jesus Christ. Now, Paul said, but I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. I want to expound on that and enlarge on this. Paul knew when he ran his race, he had a spiritual opponent. And Paul knew he could run his race the best he wanted to run it. He could run it in perfect timing with God and run the race that he had set before him, doing his will and everything. But if he yielded to Satan, Paul knew he could fall and fail in his flesh. Paul leaned upon God. Paul learned that through the experiences he went through. Paul was beaten. This apostle Paul sure suffered for the gospel. And Jesus told him when he, on the Damascus Road, uh, he was on his way to arrest some Christians one day. And he had a meet up with Jesus. And Jesus told Paul, the apostle Paul, he said, Paul, why dost thou persecute me? You will suffer for my name. And the apostle Paul sure suffered, but I tell you what, he moved in power for the Lord. He brought glory and many people into God's kingdom. And that's what God wants us to do, to run our course and run our race. And we're going to see what God said to Paul. It's so encouraging if you'll work for God. Let me challenge you tonight. Let the Holy Spirit challenge you. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit would challenge each and every person that's watching this program this night, Father God. Because, Father, I thank you if they finish their course just like Paul. I'm going to show you out there in a minute what God told Paul when he was toward the end of his race he knew the time was running out and that his time upon this earth that he had run his race but I want to show you what God told Paul it was really encouraging and I want to encourage you tonight if you're sitting on the pews in the sideline and you've gotten out of your race tonight listen get back into the race for God again hey we all trip up and fall and fail sometimes but I'm going to tell you something if you love God with all your heart I've fallen Hey, the devil's setting so many traps up for me. But you know what? I love God, and he knows our hearts. And he knows if they're clean. He knows if the devil tricks us up. We have a spiritual opponent. We need God's spiritual wisdom to, to combat a spiritual opponent. Amen? I have fallen, but you know what? Jesus picked me back up, dusted me back off, and he knew my heart that I loved him. And he got me back in my race. Sometimes you're going to fall down, let me tell you. Sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. You might skin your head up and your nose, skin your knees up just like a child. But you know what? Just like a loving mother that would pick her child up and, 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 he, and put medicine on her knees and, and, and just kind of woo them and, and, you know, cuddle them and brace them and encourage them to get back in their race again, to encourage them to get back out there again. And you know what? God does the same thing with us. You know, everything that the devil intends evil for you, that Romans 8, 28 says God will work it out for your good. If he who loves God and you're trying to fulfill his purpose and plan and run his race he has put before you, I don't care how many times the devil causes you to fall. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, a righteous man falls seven times, but he'll get back up because the Lord will pick you back up. He'll heal you and he'll put you back in your race again. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you think there was times when Jesus was discouraged? When he was in the garden of Gethsemane and all of his disciples went to sleep on him. The, the most time Jesus ever needed anybody, it was nobody but him and God. I'm going to tell you, there's times in your life when there ain't no sisters, no brothers in the body of Christ. I don't care if you run 50 ministers. You can run to Benny Hinn's meetings. You can run to Moore Cirillo's meetings. You can run to every prophet's meetings all over this country and all over the world. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes God's doing something in you and it's nobody but you and God. 
And you're going to go through them times of clipping. You're going to go through them times of pruning. When God is pruning us, He's developing fruit in us. And you can run to anybody and everybody. And nobody's going to have a word for you except God. And there's going to be times in your Christian walk that you're going to have to run it alone, folks. There's times when people, everybody forsook the Apostle Paul. And he, he run this race himself. But God said, you know what, Paul? I'm with you. I've delivered you. Paul said, he delivered, no man stood with me over Timothy. Everyone forsook me, but the Lord delivered me. And Paul said, I know in whom I have believed in, and I know who will come through for me every time. Oh, hallelujah. Be encouraged tonight. That's encouraging. God, if God be for you, who can be against you? If you just keep running your race, if you fall, get up. Keep on running. Hallelujah. Don't say, I quit. Get that out of your vocabulary. Don't never sit down and don't never say, I quit. I'm telling you something. Race that all the way out of your vocabulary. Don't even ever let it come out of your mouth. Confess the word of God. S confess, I can do all things in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who strengthens me. He's your strength to keep you running this race. Hallelujah. When you wear down and you wear out, he is your strength. And the joy of the Lord is your strength too. And those who wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength. Wait before him. Keep on running. Keep on running. If you get tired, you confess the word of God. I can do all things in Christ Jesus. You know, the Bible says we'll, we'll eat the fruit of our own lips. Too many people confess the wrong confession, and it traps them up and hinders them. Amen? We need to confess the word of God. Now, if you'll go with me over here to Philippians 3.13. Philippians 3.13. I hope you're getting blessed tonight. I pray that you're getting something out of this. I got a lot more scriptures, but it seems like when the Holy Spirit starts speaking, I don't get to it. But I pray that God's saying what he's needing to say through me this night to his people. I always try to be a yielded vessel that listens to the Holy Spirit and speak what the Lord is speaking. Because I can't bless you. I don't have not a thing to give you. I may have a few material things if you needed something. I don't have much. But I'm going to tell you, God knows what you need. And the Holy Spirit wants to bless you. He wants to make you an overcomer. And He wants to take you and run this race and help you to run it all the way and finish it. Hallelujah. Philippians 3.13. Paul said this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before you know, we need to re forget everything behind. If you have fallen, get back into your race. I'm telling you, get back into your race. Amen? And Paul went on to say, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians 2.16. Let's look at these scriptures. I'm going to have to kind of rush on through here real quick. Paul said, Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Paul said, I want to run the race that God has set before me. Romans 12, 2, it says to renew your mind. It says to know the will of God and to renew your mind also and not be transformed to this world, but re be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Let's go over here and look at this. And let's read it exactly the way it's written down in the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't God good? He's so good. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. That way, when we know the will of God, we can run our race. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12.1. Let's look at that real quick. Hebrews 12.1. And I'm going to have to rush up here. It seems like time goes so quick. Hallelujah. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We need to run our race. You know what hinders us, our race a lot of times? The devil causes us to fall and to sin. We need to get rid. Sin is extra baggage that you're carrying when you're trying to run your race. Amen? We need to get rid of that baggage. We need to get rid of it. Hallelujah. Now, if you'll go with me over here to 2 Timothy. Let's look and we'll see what the scripture says here. Hallelujah. It says, 2 Timothy 1, 9, Who hath called us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 
Now let's look over here at the last scripture. 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. And it says, Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I'm going to tell you something today. Paul said this. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Listen. Keep on running your race. I'm telling you, at the end, you're going to get a crown, just like Paul said right here. For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. We, there's a fight. We're in a war. We're in, but we need to get in the right war with the right enemy, the devil. Not flesh and blood. We're not in a carnal war. We're, our enemy is Satan and his followers. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. I pray. Did I hear those words at the very end? I pray to hear this, and I want to pray for each and every one of you. Get back in the race. Fulfill the purpose and plan of God again. Remember Romans 8, 28. We know that God works all things together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose and plan. Listen, I want to hear these words at the end. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. God has crowns laid up for you if you'll run your race and finish it. Jesus Christ of Nazareth finished his race. He knew his destiny. Know your destiny. Complete it and fulfill it. I'm telling you something here. Listen to me, people. I don't care what age you are. Get back in your race and run. Hallelujah. Listen, Moses didn't quit even when he was old. He was 80 years old before he even got started. Then he ran his race. Man, we have no reason not for fulfilling God's purpose and plan. Moses was 80 years old before God even used him. Had him on the backside of the desert, hallelujah, teaching him how to run. And boy, once he learned how to run, he put him in a race. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pray for you. God, I pray every person fulfill their eternal destiny and purpose and plan if they run their race. And I challenge you tonight. I pray you got something out of that. And go back over those scriptures and study them. God bless each and every one of you. We will see you the next time. And we'll see you next time. I pray you got blessed and you get back in your race. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I thank you for watching the telecast and the program this night. God bless you. Amen.